Hi everyone, and welcome again to Nettle, the go-to place to learn about business, finance, economics, and much, much more. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click that bell notification button below so that you never miss fresh videos and tutorials you might be interested in. Many thanks to our current Patreon supporters and YouTube members for making this video possible, and we'd also greatly appreciate if you consider supporting us as well. So please share the link in the description and click the join button below for more details. My name is Saba, and today we're continuing our investigation of distribution fitting and distribution modeling in Python. And today we're investigating another very prominent and very handy distribution for modeling asset returns, which is the Johnson SU distribution. Last video, we investigated the generalized error distribution and have seen how well it generally models uh, asset returns from S&P 500 to Bitcoin. However, there are claims that Johnson SU works even better. And it is, to some extent, a more natural generalization of the normal distribution and uses many of the same concepts that will be familiar when we code the probability density function and the cumulative distribution function for the Johnson SU. But first, we'll need to import the necessary packages, which are the NumPy package to work with arrays, the Pandas package to work with data frames, the Y Finance, Yahoo Finance package to retrieve data. We also need the SciPy stats package for some of the statistical functions. We'll need the SciPy optimize package for numerical optimization for the maximum likelihood estimation procedure. And finally, we'll need matplotlib pyplot for visualizations. Now, the mathematics of the Johnson SU distribution is a mixture of the normal distribution concept and the hyperbolic arc sine function that is imposed on top of the normal distribution to make its tails more flexible, to allow modeling fatter tails or thinner tails. This is exactly what the hyperbolic arc sine function does when imposed on top of the normal distribution. The cumulative distribution function for the Johnson SU looks very intuitive and very um, clean, very neatly. So let's start there. We have got four parameters um, compared to two parameters for the normal distribution. You've got just the location and the scale, the mean understand deviation. For generalized error distribution, you had three. You also had the shape parameter. However, the Johnson SU parameterization is slightly different. We have got two location parameters and two scale parameters. The first location parameter and the scale parameter are just applied to scale our x, so in our case, the returns, and it is inside the hyperbolic arc sine function. So these two are used to scale the variable itself. The other two parameters, uh, the second location parameter and the second scale parameter, are used to scale the resulting hyperbolic arc sine value before we perform the normal distribution transformation. So we've got four parameters, two locations and two scales. Um, one of each is used to transform the x variable, the returns, and um, one of each is used to later transform the arc sign, so the output of the first calculation. Given that this is quite a um, nested expression with the normal distribution imposed on top of the hyperbolic arc sign, we have got um, a slightly less neat probability density function, given that the probability density function is just the first derivative of the cumulative distribution function. However, it's still manageable, especially in Python. We just need to make sure that we code all of the steps correctly. We have got scale parameters. Uh, we have got the square root of um, a transformed x variable in the denominator here. And we've got an exponent of our main expression here. So um, keeping that in mind, let's proceed to our coding. We'll first need to specify our sample and we can then modify it to fit the Johnson SU distribution to all sorts of data. But let's start with S&P 500 as usual, uh, specifying its ticker and specifying its start and end dates. So let's go for a five year period from year end 2017 to year end 2022. And then we can retrieve our data using Yahoo Finance download command ticker start end and let's just take the closes running this code we can see that our prices have been retrieved and we have got a correct range of closing prices for S&P 500 
then we can calculate returns and sort them from smallest to largest for the distribution fitting purposes to construct the empirical distribution function. So the returns would be an NumPy array of prices from the second all the way to the end, divided by the NumPy array of prices from the start to the penultimate, second to last value, minus one. And then we can use the NumPy sort function to sort the returns. And having performed those calculations, we can see that our returns are indeed scaled from lowest, around minus 12%, to the highest, around plus 9.4%. So that is indeed correct. We're happy with the result. Now for the empirical distribution function, we can simply calculate the NumPy error range from one to the length of returns plus one and divided by the length of returns. That would allow us to construct an appropriate empirical distribution function that will be fluctuating from 0% to 100% and will construct by definition. Then, we can calculate the mean and the standard deviation of our distribution. So basically just NumPy average of the returns and NumPy STD of the returns. And that would allow us to use mean and standard deviation as the starting values from which we'll optimize and from which we'll seek to depart using maximum likelihood. Before that, we can actually see what the mean and standard deviation are. So the average return is um, around four basis points per day, which is quite typical. And the standard deviation, the volatile daily volatility is around 1.4%. Again, quite typical for stock indices. Now we need to define uh, our maximum likelihood uh, function that will optimize. So let's call it Johnson SU optimization. Um, and we'll use K as the vector of parameters. This basically will be um, an array, a list, there are other, of our four parameters, which are location one, scale one, location two, scale two, in this order. And here we need to make sure that our scale parameters are non-negative. And uh, this is very easy to do uh, by just uh, taking the absolute values of them at the start of the function definition. So the second parameter, which is the scale one, we can just take the absolute value of, and the second scale parameter, we can also perform the same manipulation with. And now we are ready to uh, code this bulky function as our maximum likelihood. So we can calculate it as our probability density function and uh, do as follows. We have got our scale two at the top, so that's K3. We've got scale one uh, in the denominator, so it's K1. We multiplied by the square root of two pi, so that would be two times numpy pi to the power of a half. That calculates the first denominator here, but we'll need to further divide it by the square root, so we'll raise it to the power of a half at the end, of 1 plus the scaled x, so the scaled returns, so returns minus the location parameter, the first location parameter, which is k0, divided by the first scale parameter, which is k1. This expression, scaled x, is squared, and then we take the square root of 1 plus this expression. That does the job, and we're only left with the exponent term. So we've got numpy exp, which is numpy exponent, of minus a half times the expression involving the hyperbolic arc sine function. So we've got the location two, which is k2, plus the scale two, which is k3. We times it by the numpy hyperbolic arc sine, so numpy arc sine h for hyperbolic, and then we input our scaled x again, which is returns minus k0 divided by k1. And this expression, before we multiply by minus a half, needs to be squared. And that does the job. And we can see that uh, we have calculated our probability density function for uh, some values of our parameters. Now we can return the expression that we will seek to uh, maximize, which is the uh, log likelihood. So we'll seek to maximize the sum of logarithms of probability density function estimations of those values at every single observation. However, we need to make sure that we take into account the caveat of the scipy optimize package that we'll use to optimize. It can only minimize functions. 
and we want to maximize ours. Again, uh, maximizing something positive is the same thing as minimizing something negative, so we can just put a minus in front here, and that would work just fine. And now we can calculate the optimal parameters by performing a maximum likelihood estimation using the scipy optimize minimize function. So what we can do is we can first simply refer to this function, spot minimize, of our Johnson SU optimization. Now we need to input a list of starting parameters, which are mean, standard deviation, zero and one. Again, keeping it very simple here. And we'll use Nelda Mead as our method, as our function is reasonably smooth and it has a reasonably small number of parameters. So as we run it, we'll see that the optimization is being terminated successfully. And this is the list of optimal parameters that the model arrived at. And our log likelihood, again, discarding the minus in front, is 3890. Again, we have got our uh, convergence achieved, which is good news. That means that we can now refer to the optimization result as res result and use the res x um, variable to retrieve our uh, distribution parameters. So SU location one would be res x zero. SU scale one will be the absolute value of res x one. Again, keeping in mind this transformation that we used. SU log two be resx2 and su scale 2 would be the absolute value of resx3. So we've got, again, we've got two location parameters and two scale parameters. And now we can calculate the cumulative distribution function using this procedure uh, on top. So our CDF is side by stats normal CDF of the expression involving the hyperbolic arc sign. So we've got our SU log two plus SU scale two times the hyperbolic arc sine, so arc sine H of returns minus location one, and we divide it by SU scale one. Now we have got our CDF calculated and we can visualize our distribution functions by using PLT plot of returns alongside its empirical distribution function and returns alongside its cumulative distribution function given the Johnson SU function. And we PLT show to demonstrate both graphs. And we can see how remarkable the degree of fit is. The two curves are almost identical. We can barely see the blue curve um, behind the orange curve of the Johnson SU function. But how to evaluate the goodness of fit numerically? Well, the easiest way would be to use the kolmogorov smirnov test. So here, we can calculate our supremum, which would be the maximum of the absolute deviations between the empirical distribution function and the cumulative distribution function. And then we can calculate our p-value as the exponent of minus supremum squared times the length of returns. And finally, we can print that the p-value of the kolmogorov smirnov test equals, and then we can add, um, again, a string transformation of the rounding of our p-value times 100, so it can be interpretable as a percentage uh, rounded to the four uh, decimals, and then we can add the percentage sign as well. If we run this code, we'll see that the p-value of the kolmogorov smirnov test is 71.15%, uh, which is uh, quite high, meaning that the degree of fit is quite good. And then we can put a simple if condition here. So if p-value is less than 0 0.1, shall we say, again, 10% confidence, we can print that the distribution does not fit the data, and else we can print that the distribution fits the data. Running that, we'll see that the distribution does indeed fit the data. Again, it can be seen uh, visually, it can be seen using the uh, kolmogorov smirnov test result. But let's play around with it and uh, see how well Johnson SU works for 
stock like Caterpillar, quite a well-established stock. We'll see that the degree of fit is similar and again indeed very good. What about some of the more techy stocks like Apple? Works just fine still. What about um, foreign exchange, something like Euro Dollar? Works wonderfully still. And what about something like Bitcoin? The degree of fit again is very similar and uh, quite solid throughout. And if we compare it to the results we retrieved for the generalized error distribution or the generalized normal distribution, we can see that for the S&P 500 we've got a p-value of 71%. Generalized error gave us a slightly poorer fit and a slightly more visible deviation from the uh, theoretical distribution function. That highlights the flexibility of Johnson SU and uh, the fact that it's uh, generally preferable uh, to other uh, alternative distribution functions due to its flexibility. Again, you need to keep in mind that Johnson SU uses four parameters, meaning that there is a greater risk of overfitting, especially if you're using a small sample to fit your distribution. But if you're doing it on five years worth of data, this risk is quite minimal and you can fully appreciate the flexibility and the um, degree of fit that Johnson SU provides. And that's all there is for modeling Johnson SU distribution fitting in Python. Please leave a like on this video if you found it helpful. In the comments below, I'm going to see any further suggestions for videos you would like me to record. And please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and support us on Patreon. Thank you very much and stay tuned.